Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to a Chelsea news video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the rumoured prospect of Wilfried Zaha coming to Chelsea next transfer window. As per usual, before we get into today's video, I'd like to request that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel and also hit the bell notifications icon to keep up to date with all the content that I am uploading every single day. Yes, so today's main story is on Zaha, but before we get into that, I just want to do a quick honourable mention about the Madrid derby last night in pre-season. What a ding dong. 7-3 I think it was to Atletico. Diego Costa scoring four goals and um, getting sent off in the 65th minute. Vintage Diego Costa, lovely to see him putting four past um, or certainly free pass before the halftime switch, Thibaut Courtois. It's sad to see Hazard struggle. He did get a lovely assist and pull Real Madrid, I don't want to say back in the game, but try and give them actually some respectable scoreline, which it ended up never being a respectable scoreline. But, you know, thoroughly entertaining. I've watched the highlights. I suggest you do too. And on Eden Hazard, congratulations to the little Belgian who's on the FIFA 20 cover. I think he's been on it before, or he's been one of the two players on it before, but it kind of just speaks to sort of Real Madrid bias. He gets the big money move. He gets to be on the cover. But anyway... Happy for him, congratulations. Right then, let's get into today's story. Wilfried Zaha, Crystal Palace wide forward, inside forward striker, attacking mid, that guy. Often touted as ready for a big move to a top four team, and maybe he is. And recently, well, he used to be linked with Chelsea, I think a summer ago as a potential Hazard replacement if he went to Real Madrid then. So there has been previous links, and he's recently been linked as well. He wanted to go to Arsenal, Arsenal wanted Zaha, I mean Arsenal need defenders and maybe a defensive midfielder and a number 10 and other stuff but they probably don't need Wilfried Zaha but you'd understand why they would want him. But Arsenal have got huge financial issues and they can't afford him. I think Crystal Palace, who don't need the money, especially with the money they just got for Wan Bissaka, they asked for 80 million, which is pretty funny, but you can, you know, why not? If Maguire's gonna go for 80 million, you might as well ask 80 million for Zaha. Arsenal said we'll give you 40. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But the latest news stories came out that Everton want Zaha. Now that makes a lot of sense. Um, Everton could probably, they've got Decent solid defence, even though it looks like they've lost to Kurt Zuma to Chelsea. They could absolutely take a player like Zaha to help them push into that top six and maybe start playing some Europa League football. They might actually have the money to buy him as well. And also, I'm sure Everton have got decent amounts of players on their roster that they can offload to bring in Zaha. But the headlines are saying Everton fear that Chelsea might go in for him next summer and then maybe Wilfred Zaha might hold out for one more season at Palace then make the transfer to Chelsea. Now, even if Zaha's an Arsenal fan and says he wants to play for Arsenal, that might just be recent talk for trying to push a move away from Palace now. But the truth is, Arsenal, Everton, or Chelsea, and Chelsea's current exciting project under Frank Lampard, you could forgive Zaha for wanting to move to SW6 and having a much better chance of winning trophies. I'm gonna talk about my opinion on Zaha and look at some of his statistics, but before we do get into that, I just wanna caveat this with, it could be nonsense. It could be Chelsea just being used to, you know, maybe push a price up on Everton or scare a few more clubs or, I don't know, it could be one of these released pieces of false information that is backed by an agenda for some form of desired effect. But this is silly season and we talk about this kind of stuff. I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions on Wilfried Zaha and I want to talk about if I think he can offer anything to Chelsea or if it's a worthwhile investment. But before I express my thoughts and all that, let's take a look at some of his numbers. Last season in the Premier League, Wilfried Zaha got 10 goals, 5 assists and he takes 2.1 shots per game. Very, very good considering he was in a struggling Crystal Palace team, these numbers are good. Now remember also, Zaha was not on penalties, he was very, very good at winning penalties. He'd dribble in the box, draw fouls, and then Milivojevic would often convert a penalty. So, you know, I'm not saying if he moved to Chelsea he'd be on penalties either, but I'm saying he's an incredibly useful tool in that sense, and 15 goal contributions in a struggling Crystal Palace side that aren't particularly attacking and do heavily rely on Wilfried Zaha 
is a very good offensive output and it does make you wonder how he would perform in an offensive more talented side that are creating a lot of chances and have more people to finish off chances and score goals. Let's look at some passing. His pass accuracy last season was 77.3%. Now this isn't amazing but it's not bad either and it's one of those things that you can imagine if he did come to a club like Chelsea or even Arsenal that would immediately jump to say 82 to 84 percent minimum which is a good pass accuracy he's a risk-taking player that dribbles a lot and you know ultimately with risk takers pass percentage drops so when he gets into a better team i've no doubt that it would be a sort of passable maybe even elite level zaha also made 1.6 key passes per game which is a very good statistic for a forward that often tries to take on shots himself 1.6 key passes shows that he He's taking on players, he's taking on shots, but he absolutely does try and feed his teammates, which is what you want from a creative attacking forward. You don't want them to be too selfish. And finally, I want to talk about another couple of stats. Um, one of them's unsurprising. Last season, he got six Man of the Match awards, which is very good. Um, but you know, in that Palace side, he often will be winning Man of the Match if Palace are winning the game. Um, that's 22 players on the pitch, or 26, or however many people play, but... Six man of the matches is very good and he does get you off your feet a lot of the time so he's very a very entertaining player. And finally, dribbles per game. So this is where people start thinking, oh, to get a forward back at Chelsea that could do an incredible amount of dribbles, 3.4 dribbles per game from Wilfred Zaha last season. That is sort of Eden Hazard numbers. So even if he's not as good as Eden Hazard as a player, it's a player in that mould that offers you that option. Chelsea have a lot of good dribblers in midfield or people like uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek's a great dribbler, but he won't pop off those numbers. So to get a wide forward that will do something as high as that or certainly as many dribbles as that, is a really intriguing prospect. Anyway, that is enough of the numbers for the moment. So what do I think? This is an interesting one because I've always echoed the sentiment of when the transfer ban lifts that Chelsea reinvest the Eden Hazard money and the Alvaro Morata money and they get a high scoring forward from Europe maybe, um, whether it be a striker or a winger, someone that can have 25 to 30 goal contributions in the league, something elite. Now that might be a little bit too ambitious for a player like Wilfried Zaha, but it does provoke a thought. He is Premier League proven, he's a good age, and he does look like one of those players that are performing well currently in the Premier League, and looks like they could perform even better with a better team around him. So let's think a little bit more about how he could fit into this Chelsea side. It looks like Chelsea have got two future wingers in uh, Hudson-Odoi and Christian Pulisic and obviously rotating with Willian and Pedro at the moment. So you think mm, you don't want him to take one of those winger spots but the thing is Zaha could probably play a little bit further up which made me think about the diamond. He looks very good almost as a support striker and if Frank Lampard deploys the midfield diamond again with two strikers suddenly you're thinking maybe not Batshuayi and Tammy maybe Tammy Abraham and Wilfried Zaha together. Now that looks really tasty. Michy Batshuayi has played in a two before and he should be able to play well in the two, but if you think about what Tammy Abraham offers as a striker and what Wilfried Zaha offers as a striker or a support striker, they're so different that they could complement each other incredibly well. Uh, Zaha could be taking people on, you know, doing cutbacks in the penalty area, which he's very good at. Tammy could be attacking the space, getting poachy style goals or laying it off to each other, something like that. As well as Zaha having more license to roam like Hazard did, just being able to carry the ball around everywhere. An intriguing prospect. Now, do I think Chelsea should buy Wilfried Zaha? Probably not. And again, I'm not sure how much truth there is in this story. Although if it happened, it would be very intriguing because he's proven in the Premier League and he showed that he can perform and I'd put my money on him performing better in a better team. But Chelsea have wide forwards, Chelsea have strikers and if Chelsea are really going to invest the big bucks from the Hazard and Morata sales, I feel like they should go all out on an absolute top tier elite European player. Sure, it might be a little bit more risky in terms of them, you know, betting into the Premier League but if Nicola Pepe is still knocking about or a player of that mould, 
bringing them in I think would be an excellent move. So kind of boring response from me, I'm on the fence about it and it could be a nonsense story. At time of recording he hasn't gone to Everton but do you know what I mean, he could go to Everton. Let me know your thoughts anyway, what do you think about the prospect of Zaha joining Chelsea, even if he's gone or not, would you think that type of player would be a good buy? Who would you purchase next summer as an Eden Hazard replacement? Would it be someone like Hakim Ziyech, uh, Nicola Pepe? Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Also, I just wanted to remind patrons that I recorded my Q&A for everyone on Patreon where I answered your question. It was a little bit more of a chilled vibe, me filming at home, talking about football to the camera, answering your questions. If you want the ability to do that and ask me questions, it's cost $1 a month and I'll probably do two videos a month answering your questions so it's like 50 dollar cents to basically talk to me about football i will leave the link in the description below and remember you can follow me on social media twitter and instagram both at football yannick no one really follows me on instagram so make sure you follow me on instagram at football yannick anyway guys i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like it subscribe if you're new that's it enjoy the football i will see you later Way so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back